Hey guys, Cliff the Lazy Geek here and welcome back to the channel. If you like using color as photography cameras or even DSLRs to take pictures of nebulae, uh, galaxies and all that kind of stuff, uh, you might have been intrigued whenever I was showing off filters that we call narrowband filters that allow us to capture uh, wavelengths that some are in the deep red like H-alpha and sulfur 2, some are in the blue-green like oxygen 3 and capturing those slivers of color is great for nebulae specifically emission nebulae and it lets us cut through the light pollution to capture only that signal emitted by those nebulae it's a very powerful tool for people like me who live in the city if you're not familiar with the channel i live in tokyo japan so it's a very light polluted city indeed and I've presented on the channel in the past filters like these ones from Altair Astro. And those are called dual band filters and they work with color astrophotography cameras. Uh, one will take hydrogen alpha and oxygen 3. The other will take sulfur 2 and oxygen 3. And then you can use the results of those images to merge them into what we call the Hubble palette or the SHO palette. Uh, sulfur, hydrogen, oxygen palettes uh, to really get amazing results on various nebulae of the uh, of the night sky. It's a really cool tool and it brings to color cameras what was traditionally possible only with monochrome cameras and very expensive filters for those monochrome cameras. Now the problem with such filters is that they're extremely expensive. Those uh, filters are several hundred dollars each and so they're really not cheap. They're excellent though. They have what we call very narrow band passes. So they really capture only the signal and very little of the Tokyo light pollution. So they're great for someone who's in the city and who has uh, money burning a hole in their pocket. But what would you do if you want to do those images? If you also want to do the Hubble palette with color cameras because color cameras are cheaper than monochrome cameras and you cannot afford to spend hundreds of dollars on a single filter or let alone several filters like two filters that we need to achieve that result. Well, you can go with a budget option. And this is the only budget option that I'm aware of that can do uh, H-alpha and oxygen-3 and then sulfur-2 and oxygen-3. And this is the Color Magic filters by Ascar. And the interesting part about those two filters is they can be bought as part of a kit. And that kit with the two filters inside is 190 US dollars. So those two filters put together at 190 US dollars, or I think they're 99 dollars each if you buy them separately, those filters together they cost less than the Optolong L in L Enhance. Um, and the L the L Enhance from Optolong is a very popular filter. It's very similar to the C1 here, although it is slightly better than the C1. In terms of specifications for those two filters, we have two band passes on each. The C1 filter has a band pass of 15 nanometers width plus minus three nanometers on H alpha together with a 35 nanometer width on oxygen three plus or minus five nanometers. And we have the same thing for the C2 filter, except that instead of H alpha, we have sulfur two. And so you can take images with the C1 followed by the C2 and then combine them all together for a Hubble palette or you could just take the C1 and go for an HOO type of look, which is also awesome, or kind of my personal favorite these days because it, it gives really cool colors that I don't usually see. Use only the C2 filter to have a sulfur oxygen three kind of palette. And because the sulfur is typically does not have that high of a signal to noise ratio, it doesn't completely overwhelm the oxygen three. So you get really nice, looking colors that I personally really like with just this filter. And so this set of those two filters is really, really a low price for 190. Now having those wide band passes, uh, 35 millimeters and 15 plus or minus five or three respectively, is not as good as the Optolong L L Enhance, sorry, which has uh, 25 nanometers, I think, in the oxygen three range and something like 10 or 12 in the um, H alpha range, but still plenty good. And another advantage of having such wide band passes is that it's very difficult to mess up. 
Like uh, if you have very narrow narrowband filters, uh, sometimes you can be subject as the buyer to the uh, what I refer to as the filter lottery in that you could receive a filter that's not quite up to spec, but you have no way to double check it unless you buy a spectrophotometer. When you have super wide band passes like these ones, um, they're not super wide, but relatively wide, the, 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 the filter lottery becomes irrelevant. You can have huge manufacturer changes compared to specification and it will still perf perform exactly the same. And that's a good thing. And the second thing that's really good with that is because you have wide band passes, then you can use those filters on a very fast system like the F2 systems from uh, Celestron, the RASA telescopes, or this one that's F3.5. Or you could also use those filters with a, a Samyang or a Rokinon uh, F2 lens or even a Sigma F1.8 lens. That makes them very versatile filters. And even if you live in a very light polluted city, having those filters will still be much better than if you're just using like no light pollution filter on emission nebulae. So for that price, it's, it's like difficult to to say no to those two filters. But obviously, first, I need to test them out. And so we're going to test them out in two steps. First, I am going to measure them using my own spectrophotometer to see whether they are up to spec. And as I mentioned, I don't expect them to have an issue because the, the band passes are so wide, it's like difficult to mess up. And then of course, the second part is something that I've actually already done, which is using my setup here to take images of uh, the Orion Nebula, but also of the Horsehead Nebula. The Orion Nebula, it gives us an idea of how we can use those filters to achieve a, a, co a Hubble palette or go crazy with the colors because those filters, they're called color magic. So let's have some fun with the colors, shall we? And also the Horsehead Nebula, it's very close to a very bright star which is Alnitak so we'll be able to double check the halos that we can get with those filters on very bright stars it's very common on budget filters even on expensive filters to get halos around bright stars I personally don't care at all but apparently like the whole community is adamant that halos are horrible and then that's that's fine so I'll show you how it looks like okay with that let's go and measure those filters and of course, when it comes to filter, I absolutely have to test them using my spectrophotometer. So let's get started. And I'll start with the C1, which is H alpha and oxygen three. And the specs say uh, that the oxygen three band should be 35 nanometers plus or minus five width. And the H alpha should be 15 plus or minus three. So let's double check. I'll capture and we should have a transmittance that's roughly 90%. So this is the spectrum that I see. So let's look at the transmittance around the oxygen three uh, side and it's roughly at 94, so a bit better than spec and uh, similar for the uh, H alpha, so that's good. The bandwidth, uh, the, the, the band passes width, uh, this one goes from 476 to roughly 511, which is pretty much exactly 35, so exactly as per spec. And the H alpha one goes from roughly uh, what uh, 646 to 663. So basically 17 nanometers width. This is perfectly fine. And within the specs of 15 plus or minus three. Uh, and the center of the band pass, let's try to search for oxygen three would be roughly uh, here. Uh, so it's roughly, it's a bit mm, too much to the right of the band pass, but who cares? You still have like a good five, six, uh, yeah, a, a good 10 nanometers of, uh, of room there. So you can absolutely use this filter with a super fast system without any issues. Let's look at H alpha. H alpha, the same story here, but again, you have quite a lot of margin. It's not super centered. It's a, it's decent. And you still have a lot of margin, so that really doesn't matter. And you're going to get, get great results regardless of the speed of your system. Then we'll look at the C2 filter, which is oxygen three and sulfur two. So let me capture that. There we are. And this time, let's look at the uh, band passes. So this is closer to 90%, so exactly as per spec. And the top of the sulfur two is 93% and then gets a bit towards 90%. So this looks, again, as per specs. Let's look at the width of the band passes. So let's say for the oxygen three, it's roughly uh, from, uh, yeah, let's say 473. 
to 510. So that's 37 nanometers, again, within the specs. And for the other one, we are going from, let's say, 665 to 682. So again, around 17 nanometers, so within the specs of 15 plus minus 3. So we're definitely within spec. Let's look at the center where the oxygen 3 is located. So we have the same thing. Uh, the oxygen 3 is more or less to the right of those band passes, but we do have a lot of space in between that and the uh, right-hand side of the band pass. So we should be fine with pretty much any high-speed system. And let's look at Sulfur 2. So Sulfur 2 is actually pretty good. It's very well centered. And again, uh, we shouldn't have any issues with fast systems at all. So, so overall, we have two filters that perform roughly as per their admittedly modest specifications for their very modest prices. This is exactly as I expected for such a budget filter. But of course, I've also used these filters under the stars. So let's look at the results that this gives us. Okay, so let's talk about those results with the filters. So uh, I did two things. I aimed at M42, the great Orion Nebula that we all know and love. And I took like two, uh, two hours and 45 minutes worth of data with the C1 filter. So this one, the filter with H-alpha and oxygen-3. And I took roughly three hours and 40 minutes with the C2 filter, this little guy here. So I have a lot of data, I mean, some data on the Orion Nebula. It's a very easy target, but it's also from Tokyo. So it still gives us a good, uh, good idea of what the filters are capable of, especially in the um, lower brightness areas. And I also took uh, five five minute exposures of the Horsehead Nebula together with Alnitak, that super bright, annoying star, because then it, we can get pretty much the worst case scenario in terms of what halos we can expect to get with those filters. Uh, long time viewers of the channel will know that I don't really care about halos. I'm fine with them. It's fine. It's okay. But I know that a lot of you do care. And so I did this little test in addition. Okay. And now uh, for you to get to see the results, there's one thing I need you to do. I need you to go down below, click that subscribe button. In this case, welcome to the channel. Join the channel as a member, join my Patreon, like the video, leave a comment, all of that good stuff. You can do any one of those uh, tasks if you feel if you like it. But once you're done, we're going to keep doing the video. Go on, I'll be waiting. Uh, oh, and I want to thank all of my Patreons and channel members because you guys truly make this channel possible. Obviously, making all of those videos is a lot of work, especially when I have to test stuff uh, like in this video. So your support truly makes all of that possible. Okay, now you're done, I guess. You've liked the video, you've left a comment, maybe you've subscribed, etc. Or if you felt really generous, you've joined the channel or, or joined my Patreon link in the description. Let's look at the results. So uh, here are the results. We have on the left, the results of two hours and 45 minutes of data on the Great Orion Nebula with the H-alpha oxygen-3 filter, that is the uh, C1. And then on the right, we have the C2 with uh, uh, sulfur-2 and oxygen-3 uh, result. And the color palettes are exactly what I would expect them to be when you put uh, those two together. Uh, and honestly, it looks, uh, looks pretty good. Even if you go inside like the lower signal-to-noise areas, it's, it's fine. Oh, and I think I already... Oh, yeah. Let's uh, let me actually go back a little bit because I want to make sure I show you like prior to noise reduction. But here we are in those lower lower ish signal to noise ratio areas. And, you know, it's as expected uh, from the specs and from the measurements we did with the spectrometer and the same to same, same thing with the sulfur two oxygen three. It's as expected. I mean, uh, the, the the signal to noise ratio that you get will be determined pretty much uniquely by your optics, by your sky conditions, and by the filter specifications. Once this once the filter specifications are set, you know how the filter is going to perform in terms of signal to noise ratio. Uh, but this gives us a good uh, example here, and we can see that we can truly make a Hubble palette there because we properly have sulfur 2 data, we properly have H-alpha data, and we properly have oxygen 3 data. And so for 190 bucks, something like that, for the, the set of the, the two filters, uh, being able to do that, uh, me likey. This is, uh, this is pretty good. And uh, 
I, of course, talking about Hubble pa palettes, and because the names of these filters are color magic, color with a U because British, uh, but color magic, um, I had fun with the colors. So I'm really sorry for what you're about to see. These are the colors that I came up with. Okay, I had too much fun. Uh, but yeah, this is simply because we have access to so many of the uh, of the colors. Like I, I went a bit crazy on the Hubble palette there, but it was fun. And so here we are with kind of like the final image of this, uh, this uh, great Orion Nebula. A bit of unusual colors, but... Uh, it follows the SHO and uh, and then some uh, curves transformations to achieve this. Okay, now, so we have had a look at what we can achieve with these filters. Let's have a look at the Horsehead Nebula so we can check the halos. Okay, and here we are. On the left-hand side, we have the H-alpha oxygen-3 C1 filter. And on the right-hand side, we have the uh, sulfur-2 oxygen-3 C2 filter. And yeah, there is a halo. But, you know, considering it's all attack and it's 25 minutes of data each, eh, it's not that bad, to be honest. I'm, I'm fine with that personally. And I'll, I'll let you make your own judgment because, again, I don't really care about halos. So is that a large halo? Is it really bad? Eh, I have no idea. <laughs> so <laughs> I need to ask you, how bad are the halos? I, I think they're fine, but let me know down in the comments what you think of this. Of course, all of the links to purchase those super ultra cheap filters really are in the description, so you can uh, you can go and have a look. And uh, yeah, those two filters together they cost less than a single Optolong LX L Enhance, and of course less than an L Extreme, less than, a, than an L Ultimate. But then we're not in the same category. At least we are in roughly the same category of the L Enhance, even though we're slightly lower from the specifications. But still, two of those filters that let you do a full Hubble palette with a color camera for $190, that is pretty good. And so would I recommend buying those two filters? If you're on a budget and you want to do Hubble Palette with color cameras, absolutely, yes. These are e excellent uh, options for such a low price. I mean, they're not the best filters ever. The, the, the specs are, as per the budget, they're, they're, the specs and the price uh, correlate to one another. I mean, there's no free lunch. Uh, but if you're on a budget, there's no other alternative at, at that price range right now. So go for it. And as far as I can tell, the specifications match closely with my spectrophotometric analysis of the filters. So there's no surprise there. And uh, like, unlike something with narrower band passes, like seven nanometers, five nanometers, that kind of stuff, it's actually super hard to mess up uh, filters that have like that kind of, uh, of very wide band passes. So the, the filter lottery exists, but becomes almost irrelevant with such specifications. So yeah, I mean, this is perfectly fine. And uh, of course, is it going to be as good as my Altair uh, Astro HAO3 and Sulfur 2 Oxygen 3 uh, filters that are four nanometers band passes and cost like, oh my gosh, like four times more, five times more? Of course not. but. They're a budget option. And so to, to my eyes, they're absolutely worth it. And then if you're like in a Bordel 4, Bordel 5 zone and you don't think you really need like to go with an L Extreme or the Altair, Altair uh, filters or with something that has a really narrow bandpass because you're in or in an area that doesn't, doesn't have that much light pollution, then yeah, those two filters can absolutely do the job in, in such a situation. So, I mean, what's what's not to like there? Um, yeah, let me know. Let me know in the comments. Is there anything I've overlooked? Anything else you'd like me to test? Or you just want to tell me I'm a paid shill <laughs> that's forcing people to, to, to part with their high hard earned money and cash? Uh, yeah, I mean, let me know down in the comments. And uh, again, links in the description if you're interested. But I think as a, as a budget option, it's excellent. And it's the only available at that price range that I'm aware of. So, so there we are. And with that, thank you so much for watching. Uh, again, go down below, like the video, subscribe, leave a comment. That all helps the channel out. And if you're feeling glorious, join my Patreon. Join my channel as a member. It truly makes the, the whole difference. And, and you guys make the channel possible. So thanks again. And uh, yeah, I mean, more important than all of that, don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars. And I'll see you next time.